guys, welcome to my Sew Bliss. Today I'm super excited to be partnering up with Baby Lock Sewing Machines and bringing you another sewing tutorial. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to make a necktie just like this one. This is the size small, it's about for a seven, eight year old around there. So I'm making this for my son, I'm gonna make another one um, for both my sons and my husband for Easter, so I'm super excited about that. This would also make a perfect Father's Day present. So just keep that in mind and it's pretty quick and easy. There's a couple steps that are kind of like, wait, am I doing this right? It's kind of weird looking, but that's why I'm filming the tutorial so that it makes sense to you and it's quick and easy and you'll just love it. So I'm going to be using my baby lock zest, which is this little machine right here. This is a super basic sewing machine. It's in the genuine collection and it's really awesome. It's super lightweight. So I take it when I travel. Um, if I just want to do some sewing projects or just moving around the house, going from upstairs to downstairs, it's really nice and easy to move around. It has all your basic sewing stitches, so it's really beginner friendly. Um, I've been teaching my boys to sew on it actually, and it's been super fun and <laughs> really funny to watch them um, explore the world of sewing. So I'll make sure to put links down below for other videos I've done with this machine and links where you can check that machine out and all the details and all the information on it. So the supplies that you're going to need for this project are really just your fabric, your basic sewing supplies, and um, you do need a hand needle, and you're gonna do some hand sewing. So I keep that kind of with my basic sewing supplies stuff. You're also going to need a iron that is gonna be playing a really important role um, in making a tie. So make sure you have that as well. I did cut um, all my fabrics on the bias. It's better for ties to be on the bias because it gives it a little bit of stretch. I think it makes it more comfortable and it just lays nicely. So keep that in mind. I know some fabrics you can't really do that with, um, but I did use, I have about a yard of uh, one fabric, but I'm sure you could go down to like half a yard depending on what size you're making. Um, so just keep that in mind that it is cut on the bias most of the time. So with all that said, let's cut out our pattern pieces and get started. For our first step, we're actually gonna be marking these fold lines, which are on the pattern pieces. So I've just taken my pattern and folded right on the fold line. Folded it just like that. Cause then I can take it over to my piece um, that I cut out of my fabric and line it up. So it's lined up where it's gonna lay. Could even put some pattern weights down on that. That might be helpful. And then I'm just gonna take a marking tool, make sure it's washable or something that will come out of your fabric. And I'm just gonna make lines. I don't need to make tons with this one. It shows up pretty nicely. But if you can kind of see that line right along there. So then I know exactly where I'm going um, to iron it Wait in a minute. So over my iron, I'm gonna take my piece, both pieces that I just marked, and I'm gonna fold it to the wrong side, right along that mark, both marks that I just did. And you want it to be pressed really nicely. Um, so just make sure you spend that time ironing it. I'm letting it sit for a minute. This fabric just irons so well. Um, I don't have any issues with it, but if you have an, a fabric that's kind of hard to iron, just watch out for that and make sure you're spending that time pressing it. So there's that side. And then we once you have both of those pieces ironed, next we're going to take the front lining pieces and we're going to sew them on. So this is going to be right sides together. I'm just using um, this extra linen fabric that I had. It's really lightweight um, to do my lining pieces. So it doesn't really have a right or a wrong side, but this is going to be right sides together. And we're just going to line it up with this edge right here. And it's meant to not go all the way to the bottom. There should be about a quarter of an inch left over right there. And I'm gonna sew down, I'm gonna sew a quarter of an inch down and um, stop right before that end. So I'm gonna take that over to my sewing machine, sew that on. 
And we are doing what we're doing right now with this lining piece, we're gonna do with the smaller lining piece on um, the back necktie part. So keep that in mind. So on this machine, a quarter of an inch is just lined up with the presser foot. So I'm just starting at the top and I am gonna back stitch and go down. And I'm stopping about a quarter of an inch. If I was on the other side, I could see it, but that's okay. And I did back stitch and then I can pull that out. So that is what it's going to look like. With that first side sewn, we're then gonna do the same exact thing on this other side. But if you notice, it obviously isn't gonna reach across unless we have a little bit of extra fabric on our main fabric. So what we're gonna do is there will be some excess fabric there that we're just gonna make sure stays out of the way, but we're gonna take it and still pull it over and line it up with our edge. Line up that corner. Stick some pins in it, make sure it stays in place. Because we're going to be sewing the same exact way, doing the same exact thing, stopping a quarter of an inch before the end. We're just going to have this kind of pucker in it in the back. Okay, so there I have it. I could even that a little more okay so there I have it pinned here's what it looks like in the back you can see that excess fabric we're just gonna push it off to the side so I push it off to the side I already sewed and then come over here and line it up at a quarter of an inch and sew down just like we did before so you can kind of see there how it worked out and then there's my back. It's not like stuck on either of the sides. <laughs> so now while we're over at the sewing machine, we're just gonna do our next step as well. And that is going to be folding it in half, which it kind of naturally does, at least with my fabric. Mine's a little bit of like a linen-y cotton feel. And I'm gonna be sewing across here. It's gonna be bigger than a quarter of an inch. Oh, get my camera to focus, there we go. So I'm going to be stitching right across so that it intersects with this stitching on this edge as well as this stitching on this edge. So if I come over here and lay it down, I'm more, you, this is more eyeballing it than an exact measurement because obviously that's going to be a lot bigger over here. It's going to be a lot bigger than a quarter of an inch, but... I just want it to intersect with this other stitching so we don't have any holes. So I'm gonna stitch across. I am gonna back stitch. If you just wanna do a straight stitch and then go back and do another stitch on top of that um, to make sure it's looking nice and nothing is um, being caught or sewn weird, that's totally fine too. So I'm gonna trim my threads next. And kinda looks funny <laughs> right there. And I like to actually trim this tip too, so there's not as much bulk. So it's gonna be just like that. And to check that, I just am going to turn it right sides out. And see how that lays. We'll iron it in a minute to make sure. But yeah, so far, that's looking really good, really nice. So I did go ahead and iron um, this down, just crisp it up, and then I folded these edges again, just so the lining piece has those fold lines. And it's just, oh, it's looking so good. This is just one of those projects that it's so satisfying when you like iron it and it just crisps and it, these edges look nice. So I'm really excited about this. Now I'm gonna take my other piece. This was my, um, I believe this was my front piece, my front of the tie. I'm gonna take the back piece of this, just like this that we ironed and do the exact same thing. So there should be a smaller one of this that goes on there and we'll then get it ready to make into a tie. 
Once the ends of those ties are ready, we're then gonna take them and put them right sides together. So I'm gonna open them up, get all my strings off of them, and line up so it's gonna look like an L, just like this. I'm lining up my notches. And line that, there we go, right on top. So this corner right here and up here is gonna be off the edge. That's totally fine. So I'm gonna pin that in place and then we'll take it over to the sewing machine. Now I'm ready to sew. I'm gonna sew again at a quarter of an inch. You'll notice it'll start right here where this edge meets with this little edge sticking out. So just to let you know. And then I'm gonna start sewing. Back stitch and just sew straight across. And back stitch right at the end. And trim that. Okay, so now our tie is attached and it's one long tie. So I'm gonna iron this open really nice real quick. Now that we have this big long tie, we're then gonna take one of the edges, we're just doing this to one edge, and I'm gonna fold it over about a quarter of an inch and iron that all the way down. Our next step is going to be taking um, these back inner lining pieces and front inner lining pieces and putting them inside our tie. So it just actually lays right in the middle, right in between where you ironed. So I'm going to take this end piece, this pointy piece, and stick it in all the way to the end. Make sure it lines up with the other point. And then lay it nice. And just like that, and then we can do another one. Um, I typically haven't sewn them down and haven't really found any issues. If you want to, you can take um, your hand needle and some thread and stitch them together if you would like. I don't find it that necessary. Um, they do overlap. This one, not too much, a couple inches. But if you want to trim that, you can as well. If for some reason you have like a thinner fabric and you don't like the excess bulk right there, you can definitely trim that. I'm just going to leave it for now and call it good. And now once that's in place, I'm actually going to take it back over to my iron. We're going to iron it all really nicely again. And this is a good time right now to check and see if this point is looking nice, if you like it. Um, if it lines up, you can fold it in half to kind of make sure it's equal, if it lines up like that, or even fold it the other way and see how it lines up. That one's a little trickier, but then you can kind of maneuver this a little more and then really press it again to make sure, <laughs> lots of pressing, just to make sure it stays in place and it's accurate for you. Because um, our final step is after this, and that's going to be some hand stitching this closed. And so this is just preparing us, and this is just going to make it so much easier. So one thing that I forgot to mention before we do our final step, our hand stitching, um, and finishing this off, is we need to, if you want, put in the tie stay, which just helps... So this part right here, when they're wearing it, lays nicely and isn't like over here or over here, it's more behind the tie. So I am just using this twill tape. It's kind of unraveling a lot, so I'm hoping it'll work okay. Um, you can do this by hand um, with hand stitching, or I think I'm going to actually sew it in really quick because of how bad it's unraveling. And I'm just going to open mine up. There is a place on your pattern that tells you, these right here, tells you where to do it, the tie keeper. 
Um, I'm going to do it a little bit higher. I'm just worried. That just seems really low to me, which is fine. Maybe it's, maybe it's not. <laughs> so I'll line it up just like this and open it up. So I'm just going to match those raw edges up right along the edge of this shorter fold and sew that in. So that way it'll tuck it in like so. And then I just will sew the hand, I'll hand sew the edges down. So it just lays like that. And I actually need to put it in a little more or cut it so that it's the width. It's not bigger than the actual tie. <laughs> I don't want that sticking out the side. So keep that in mind. So I'm just going to go do that. So here's what it looks like once I have it sewn, fold it over. And then my last, my very, very last step, I'll just hand sew that down, do some like whip stitches or whatever to sew that down with a needle and thread. So for our last major step, other than that, um, it's going to be sewing this part right here closed. So I have some needles in it. I think I need to do them the opposite way, but I'll start this way. Um, I'm just going to start on either end. You can start. It doesn't matter really, but I'm just going to start. I have my needle threaded and I'm just going to put that knot kind of somewhere inconspicuous. <laughs> I'll just pull that through. Oops. And then if you want, you can do um, just kind of like a bar tack of like stitches back and forth. And that would just, I think I'm going to do it real quick. And that was, these ones will be seen, whereas everything else won't be seen. But I think this will just hold it in place nicely. Hopefully this helps. So I'll just do that a few times. I'm just going to start just from that bar tack. If you didn't do the bar tack, this would just be straight from the knot. And what you do is you kind of slip your needle through that folded edge that we did, just like that, and pull it through. My, my thread keeps getting stuck, even though I don't even have that much right now. Oh well. And then I take it and I just do a little chunk from the other side and I'm going to do it as close to the edge as possible, if not slightly under. And I'm not going all the way through, just getting a couple threads. So see how that, you don't see anything, there's no stitches to be seen. And then I just continue on. So right above that I would go through that folded edge about a quarter to half an inch. Pull that through and then line it up right beneath it and go through the bottom fabric. Get a little chunk and pull through. And if you look on the front side, you can't see anything. That's just my pin, but there's no threads that you can see. So I'm just going to finish that off by doing that. And at the other end, if you want, you can also do a bar tack. And I think I'm going to move my needles so that they hold that down. But I'm just going to finish that off all the way through and then stitch this down on either side as well. And then once you are all done with your hand sewing, you are all done with your tie. I hope you guys enjoyed this project. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and to subscribe for more sewing tutorials. I'll leave links down below for patterns, fabrics, and the machine that I use, the Baby Lock Zest, and all the additional videos that I've done with it. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye!